Hey, um, I'm Patrick Kelly. How are you? I, uh, thanks for, hey, thanks for playing the video. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> well, obviously, you know, <laughs> you know, the topic of the day, right? Is, is direct guest join. What's direct guest join? Let's just kind of jump right into it. It's going to be a little bit of a longer video as we have a lot of demos to walk through today. <sighs> direct guest join is, is a joint venture with with Microsoft and and Zoom to allow the choice of whatever conferencing room platform you choose to be able to join the one that you didn't <laughs> right so if you choose Zoom conferencing rooms you can be you're going to be able to join Microsoft Teams meetings now and if you choose Teams rooms Microsoft Teams rooms you're going to be able to join Zoom meetings now and and that's really that's where the industry is going, right? Is no longer can we be confined into our, our little silos of applications or, or ways to communicate. That's not what users want. Users want choice. Users want the ability to choose whatever platform works best for them. And guess what? Not everything, not every application, not, not every company's application works perfectly for every user. Users need choice. Users need different tools. Susie in HR works differently than Bob in accounting, works differently than Steve in sales. They need different tools, and it's IT's job to provide those tools to be as effective and as collaborative as possible. Remember the day when SMS kind of just first came out and, and you could text people that were in your carrier? Like if you were at a sprint, if you had a Sprint phone, you could text other Sprint users, but you couldn't text a Verizon user and Verizon user couldn't text an AT&T user. And, and so texting was there, but it was very minimally used in the beginning. Not until the industry came to an agreement saying, hey, this is a powerful tool. We need to be able to text not just within one platform, but within all platforms. And once that happened, everything took off. Everyone was texting. Everyone was utilizing SMS. No longer were kids using uh, calling their parents anymore. <laughs> that, that might be a little dramatic, but I don't think my kids have ever called me. Maybe if they need money, right, and I wasn't texting back. The point is that that's the evolution of communication. We are going more toward maybe uh, a, a different agnostic level, an agnostic way of, of viewing, communicating. No longer are we going to, do we want to be siloed as users and talk into our little bubbles here. We want to talk to everyone and use the tools that we like to have, make that happen. No longer are we in the 80s and 90s draconian era of IT where we're going to push something out and you get it for the next three years, whether you like it or not. Users are not accepting of that philosophy anymore. Users demand best in breed. Users demand choice to do their job. And if IT doesn't give it to them, they're going to go get it themselves. Shadow IT is prevalent in the, in, in the industry for a reason. There are choices that people use that they like better. And that's okay. Accept that. You'll make your users happy. And so this kind of goes to the direct guest join um, philosophy is that as as great as Zoom is, as great as Teams is, not everyone's going to choose the same thing. They have different needs. Users have different needs. Some people need Teams for maybe a collaboration with Office 365 uh, that they utilize the power of. And, and some users might need the power of Zoom and the high fidelity and the high quality of Zoom and all the functions that Zoom has that Teams doesn't. And then combine these two because the industry is going into the, to that direction. Right. If you were to look at the the UCAS uh, upper right, you know, quadrant of Gartner, you're going to see the players there. Right. And you're going to know over the last two years, if you if you haven't been living in a cave, you're going to know the primary players are really Zoom and Microsoft today in the UCAS space. You have other players, too. I'm not saying you don't. You have the ring centrals, the dial pads, the eight by eights, the, the WebExes of the world as well. And people choose those, too. But today we're talking about the big ones, right? The biggest ones out there today, Zoom and Teams. And how do we get these to work together? Then think about that scenario. You might have an enterprise that is all Zoom. You might have an enterprise that's all Teams, but they're partners. How do they communicate? How do they have meetings together? That's what Direct Guest Join was designed to do, is designed to give companies consumers choice of their platform and then be able to communicate and utilize the power of that platform to 
get work done with other platforms. That's what direct guest join is. That's what Zoom and Microsoft are working toward is this agnostic world of it doesn't matter what you choose, you'll be able to communicate with what another person chose. And so that's what direct guest join is. It's, it's the ability to join Microsoft Teams meetings from Zoom rooms, join Zoom meetings from Microsoft Teams rooms and have the user experience as seamless and effective as possible. So when I walk into a Zoom room, at, uh, Zoom room conferencing room, I don't care as a user if it's a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting, the join experience, the look and feel of the UX or the user experience is exactly the same regardless. Same thing if you walk into a Microsoft Teams room. You want to be able to invite that Teams room, use that hardware in that Teams room, that Microsoft Teams room to join Zoom meetings or Teams meetings. But also, as the user walks in, as that Susie in HR walks into the HR conferencing room and she has a Microsoft Teams uh, room inside there, she wants to join that Zoom experience the exact same way she would join a Teams experience. She doesn't want to be trained on that. She doesn't want to have some sort of adoption. She just wants to walk in and it works. One touch join experience works. That's exactly what direct guest join is. So there's two phases of this we're going to show you today. The first phase is how do I actually invite a Microsoft Teams room to a Zoom meeting? How do I invite a Zoom room to a Microsoft Teams meeting? And then after that, what's the experience like for an end user when they walk into a Microsoft Teams room to join a Zoom meeting or they walk into a Zoom room to join a Teams meeting? So let's get right into it. I, I use Outlook to, uh, to schedule my meetings. I think 99.86% of the world uses Outlook. I totally made that up. I have no idea. I'm sure Google's mad at me for saying that. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. There's two primary ways to schedule meetings, right? There's two email platforms in the world today. Again, primary leaders, Microsoft and Google. You're using one of those two. I'm almost 100% sure of that, right? And so now, let's just say you're in the Microsoft world, right? You're using Outlook for your email and calendaring agent. How do I, do, how do I utilize that? Well, thankfully... Zoom knows full well that you're probably using Outlook to schedule your meetings. Microsoft knows full well you're probably using uh, Outlook to schedule your Teams meetings. So both companies have developed plugins within the Outlook application itself. So now you can just go to the calendar of Outlook, which you see on my screen right now, and you're going to have, I have, you can literally have both plugins installed at the same exact time. Because we know users sometimes use Teams meetings maybe internally. But for external meetings, we see a lot of industries going and scheduling Zoom meetings for all those revenue generating calls, right? Those revenue generating interactions, we're seeing the enterprises use Zoom more for that and then Teams for collab internally. And that's really a good use case. So now, Susie in HR wants to schedule a meeting in Outlook. How does she do it? Well, I've installed the Zoom plugin. I've also installed the Teams plugin. Let's utilize both these plugins to make uh, meetings. So let's just schedule a meeting. Let's schedule a Zoom meeting inside of Outlook. We hit the schedule a meeting button. It's very complicated, I know, <laughs> right? And it's just self-titles it, MOD admins, or, or let's just say Susie's, Susie's Zoom meeting, right? And she now needs to add some people to the meeting, right? So I, I do it this way. You don't have to do it this way, but I do it this way. I go to scheduling assistant so I can see the free busy information of everybody I'm, I'm in, inviting to the meeting. And let's just invite admin here. We'll just invite admin uh, to the meeting. We'll invite Irvin to the meeting right here. Uh, but also we need to invite the Microsoft either Teams room to this Zoom meeting. So under resources, right here, under resources, this is the room you want to book. So let's add the meeting. There, I have my Microsoft Teams room right over there. It's called MTR, right? So really fancy name for a Microsoft Teams room. I literally named it Microsoft Teams room. I'm going to add that to my Zoom meeting. And what it just did is it just added it to the Zoom meeting. I'm going to change the time because look at this. I know that Microsoft Teams room, by the way, look. I know that Microsoft Teams room is booked at three and is booked at four. Therefore, I know the only free time I have is to invite all these people is two o'clock. Two o'clock, see how everyone's free right there? Everyone's free and now we can invite everyone to the meeting. 
Look what also what happens. I've actually added some verbiage to the meeting invite so my users are, can understand what they just did. Under right here, it says Microsoft Teams Room. This room is a Microsoft Teams Room and is equipped to support Teams and Zoom meetings. So users are fully aware that this can happen. I'm gonna then send my meeting. It's gonna send my meeting to all the individuals that I just joined and boom, right there, Suzy Zoom meeting shows up in my calendar. All right, that's how you invite a Microsoft Teams room to a Zoom meeting. It's really that simple. And let's do the reverse. Let's do the reverse. Let, just a reminder that he just invited me. Let's do Microsoft Teams room. And we're gonna do a new Teams meeting. And we're gonna start this meeting and it's gonna, and the Microsoft Teams, Teams plugin is going to insert all the, all the meeting information right down here. I'm still going to call it now that we're going to call it Susie's team meeting. Okay. Now, same thing. I'm going to go to scheduling assistant. I'm going to invite the same people that I invited before Irvin. And then I want to invite this time. I actually, what I have done is I've actually synchronize my zoom room right over there with my admins calendar. So I've actually paired the two. So this is something zoom can do. Now you can now pair your zoom client with hardware in the room and that hardware in the room can then read your personal calendar and update that zoom room according to your personal calendar. Now, maybe you're an enterprise and you want to say, Hey, can you invite a zoom room and have the zoom room have its own calendar? 100%. I'm just showing you the power of what zoom can do. So let's, again, we know that that time is booked. So let's go one o'clock for this meeting and we're going to send it out. So now we've just sent that, we sent two different meetings, right? We've sent a scheduled Teams meeting. We've sent a scheduled Zoom meeting all from Outlook. And obviously my calendar is updated, but I've invited the conferencing rooms. So I need to see if their calendar is updated. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you something really cool here uh, that Zoom does. It allows you to see the Zoom room interface from a web browser. This is pretty nerdy and I get it, but this is not typically what you're going to do is it Susie in uh, HR, she's not gonna have access to this, but as an IT organization, you have access to this cool, really cool tool. And you as a Zoom uh, rooms administrator can go to any Zoom room and open up the interface and see what the user's seeing. So here's my Zoom room right here. My Zoom room interface is right here. I literally have happy hour. I have all the meetings that I have scheduled. I have a Zoom meeting and look what happens. Here's what the user is going to see when they walk into that Zoom room. And actually, I'm going to walk you right over there to the Zoom room, which is really right in the corner over there. I actually have a happy hour. Susie's got a happy hour on her calendar from 5 to 5.30. Do not book her for any meetings then. But also, I've already created a, a meeting, a, a Zoom meeting at 4 o'clock, a Teams meeting at 3 o'clock. And watch what happens if I were to click on that meeting. It says start. I can literally one touch start that meeting right here. This is a Zoom meeting. I can literally one touch start a Teams meeting. Here's the Teams meeting I just set up and this will refresh and, and be updated uh, once the calendar accepts that invite I just sent. But let's walk over there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm literally gonna change my camera. I'm gonna change my camera so I can walk over there. I'm gonna use a tool called right here. I'm going to do it right here. Epoch cam. Epoch cam is an amazing tool. It's a whole other video I want to do, but it's the ability to use my iPhone as a zoom camera. How do I do that? It's I'll do another video, but it's really cool. So I'm actually utilizing my, uh, Microsoft, sorry, my Microsoft, my iPhone, my Apple iPhone as my zoom camera. While that's super cool, I'm going to actually, um, I'm probably going to go off mic cause I'm going to walk across the room right? And you're going to not hear me, but I just want to show, show you what you're going to see. I'm going to show you a Microsoft Teams room. And I'm going to show you a Zoom room and what the user experience is when they walk into a room. Follow me. Let's go on a little journey.
Okay, wasn't that cool? You saw the experience from an end user's perspective. They can literally walk into a Zoom room, go to the Zoom room console, and see exactly what I just showed you on my screen. That I, as Susie in HR, I don't care if it's a Teams meeting, I don't care if it's a Zoom meeting, it's the exact same user experience regardless of what where I walk into. Regardless of what hardware you chose as your vendor of choice, you can walk into a Microsoft Teams room and join a Zoom meeting. Walk into a Microsoft Teams room and join a Teams meeting. Walk into a Zoom room, join a Zoom meeting. Walk into a Zoom room, join a Teams meeting. And the experience for the end user is exactly the same with whatever platform you chose. That's the power of direct guest join. And look for this, obviously this should, not obviously, but I just showed you a couple of different ones. I showed you a Zoom room experience on a Zoom room, a full Zoom room controller. We also have Zoom room appliances, Microsoft the same way. That, I just showed you a Microsoft Teams room. Microsoft also has Teams room appliances or what they call collaboration bars. Well, they don't call it collaboration bars anymore, right? They call it Microsoft Teams room appliance. Again, this is going to be all part of the direct guest join growing uh, into an agnostic platform, allowing you as a user to be able to join Zoom and Teams meetings together. Something really cool, I'm actually gonna change this camera view back. See, watch, I'm gonna change this camera view back to uh, my Prezi camera. How about that? That's super cool. It's been in beta for a while, public preview for a while. It just went GA, I think last week. And that's really where the industry is going, right? UCAS has got to be more open, standard based. And not in basically saying, I'm not gonna get an argument. It's like, hey, you have to have your own protocols and they have to be the same protocols as everybody else. That's not what I'm saying. Use whatever applications, APIs, SDKs you want, but also have the ability to hook into other, other solutions. And that's exactly what Microsoft and Zoom are doing together to create this the seamless join experience. Full disclosure, Zoom has always had the ability to join other experiences. I'm not under, under uh, I'm fully aware that the world revolves around more than just Microsoft and Zoom. There's also Cisco and Poly, and I get all that. And there's our hardware that they have in the conferencing rooms already. Today, as well as for the past few years, Zoom has natively been able to join any H323 or SIP-based conferencing room. That's a standard if you're, very, if you're not too nerdy. I've just got this, I've just bent this hat, by the way. If you're not, I don't have to get too nerdy, but those are the standard protocols for audio and video joining a conferencing room. Those are open standards. Everyone can adhere to them and you can join those from a natively, from a team, from a Microsoft, sorry, Jeez, that's really wrong. You can natively join H323 and SIP-based meetings natively from a Zoom room experience. You cannot do that natively from a Microsoft Teams room experience. You are stuck in that Microsoft world. So if you have providers that are using Cisco and uh, um, our standards-based uh, equipment, Teams rooms cannot, nat cannot natively join that experience. You can, if you're a Microsoft Teams uh, solution provider, or uh, you chose Microsoft Teams as your as your UCAS solution, you can buy third party uh, investments like the Pexips and the Blue Jeans and the Cisco's and the Polys of the world that can connect into those standards based systems. But it's another charge. It's another company. It's another vendor. It's another partner that you have to get into this mix. Zoom does it differently. Zoom has that built in, right? So hopefully that's helpful. Direct guest join. This is how you invite a, a Zoom room and or a Microsoft Teams room to the, the to the direct guest join experience. And that's the end user experience when you walk into a Microsoft Teams room or Zoom room, the end user experience as well. I'll probably do a few more of these and showcase what it actually looks like on the screen once I actually join the meeting, but I just didn't have time today and I got other meetings to go to. So hopefully direct guest join is uh, something that you have heard about now and, um, and, and understand now and can reiterate when this, your boss says, hey, I don't know how to join that meeting. You're like, walk, let's, let's take a little journey and walk through it and you can show them. All right. Happy Friday, everybody.